Hello, my name is Joshua Mutu and welcome to Pixelmake. In our last video, we created our asteroid prefab as well as the damage interactions between the bullets and the asteroids. If you haven't watched that video, the link will be in the description below. In today's video, we're going to be building an asteroid field. The difficulty of today's video is going to be the fluffy difficulty, so it won't be that hard. The assets we'll be using in today's video is the asteroid pack and the spaceship pack. If you want to start from this point in the series, you can always download our project off GitHub. The link will be in the description below. So to start off, I'm going to create an empty game object. So in the hierarchy, I'm going to right click and create empty. I'm going to rename this to asteroid underscore field. So this is going to be the game object where we spawn our asteroid field. So the next thing I'm going to do is create our asteroid field script. So I'm going to go into the scripts folder and go into right click, go to create and C sharp script. And I'm going to call it asteroid underscore field. So I'm going to add that script to our asteroid field. And I'm also going to create a prefab of this object. So I'm going to open up our asteroid field script. I'm going to get rid of all this. So to start off, we need to create a game object array for all of our asteroids. So I'm going to do public game object, square brackets, and I'm going to call this asteroids. And this is going to be equal to new game object, and in square brackets, I'm going to do six for our six asteroids. So what we're going to do is spawn a random asteroid in a random position within a given range. And we also want to spawn a number of those asteroids. Next, I'm going to create a public integer. So public int, and I'm going to call it number of asteroids. And this is going to be the number of asteroids we spawn in our asteroid field. The next thing I'm going to create is an integer array. So public int square brackets, and I'm going to call this random asteroid. So what this integer will do is select a random asteroid for us to spawn. So the next thing we need is a vector free for our spawn range. So public vector free, and I'm going to call this spawn range. So the next thing I'm going to create is a public integer. And what I will use this for is to lock in our random generated numbers to a given integer. Public int, and I'm going to call it seed. So to start off in our start function, so void start, I'm going to set the amount of integers there are in our random asteroids array. So random asteroids is equal to new int square brackets, and this will be equal to our number of asteroids. So next I'm going to create our seed mechanic. So we do random dot in state and in brackets we do seed. So next I'm going to create a for statement to spawn our asteroids. So for brackets int i is equal to zero semicolon i is less than number of asteroids semicolon and i plus plus. So the first thing I'm going to do is set our random asteroids up. So we do random asteroids square brackets i is equal to random dot range and in brackets i'm going to do zero comma six so for each integer in our random asteroids array it will randomly select uh, a given value between zero and six so next we're going to instantiate our asteroids so instantiate brackets asteroids and in brackets we do random asteroid square brackets and in that we do i comma and to spawn it in a, a random position we're going to do new vector free brackets and we're going to do transform dot position dot x plus random dot range and that range is going to be minus spawn range dot x and spawn range dot x so we're going to do the same thing for our y and z axes as well so I'm going to copy that, do comma, I'm going to paste that in. Just going to put it on a new line so it doesn't go off screen. So I'm going to change that from X to Y. Paste that in again and change that to Z. Oh yeah, we need a comma here, don't we? And finally we do quaternion dot identity. And what this will do is set our rotation to be zero, zero, zero. We could also use this in our ship controller where I did quaternion dot Euler zero, zero, zero. So I'm going to change that to quaternion dot identity. Save that script. And I'm going to save that script as well. I'm going to go back to Unity, select our asteroid field. I'm going to spawn in 100 asteroids. 
with a range of 50 on the X axis. I'm going to leave the Y axis as 0 and the Z axis I'm also going to make 50. Before we test our game we also need to assign our asteroids. So what I'm going to do is assign the asteroids that are in our prefabs folder. So I'm going to get rid of these, select our asteroid field and add our asteroids to our array. So I'm going to apply those changes and if we test our game we should spawn random asteroids in a given area. So currently you can't see the range of our asteroids in our scene. So if we go back to the asteroid field script I'm going to create a new function which will draw a wire box around the asteroid field script which will be our spawn range so we do void on draw gizmo and the first thing we've got to do is set our wire box color so we do gizmo dot color do bear in mind it is the american way of spelling it and that's going to be equal to color dot red so the next thing we've got to do is set, uh, draw our wire box so we do gizmo dot draw wire cube and in brackets we set we first set the center point of our box and then we do the size so we do transform dot position and then we do comma and then we do spawn range times two so the reason we do a spawn range times two is because we're doing so for the x-axis we've done 50 in the minus direction from the center point and also 50 in the positive direction from the uh, from zero so if we save that go back to unity and as you can see it's drawn a red wire box around our asteroid field do bear in mind that the uh, on draw gizmo will not be uh, visible in your game scene but you can also force it to display by going to the top and next to stats you click gizmo and it will make them visible so currently if we run our game our asteroids will spawn and start rotating but they won't be moving forward so in our asteroid field script so the first thing i'm going to do is create our speed float and to make it look more like a natural asteroid field I'm going to set a speed range as well. So I'm going to create a public float. I'm going to do square brackets and I'm going to call this speed range. So in our start function, I'm going to set the amount of floats in our speed range. So we do speed range is equal to new float square brackets number of asteroids. In our for statement, I'm going to do speed range square brackets i is equal to random dot range brackets and I'm going to set the speed to be between 10 and 15. So to apply our speed to our asteroids, we have to first make it so we can access our asteroid objects. So first I'm going to create a private game object array and I'm going to call it asteroid clones. I'm going to set our asteroid clones to be equal to new game object square brackets number of asteroids. So in our for statement, we want to do asteroid clones square brackets i is equal to our instantiated object. Right, so to apply our speed, we want to get our asteroid object, so asteroid clones square brackets i dot transform dot get component. And the component we want to access is our rigid body. So we do rigid body brackets dot velocity is equal to transform dot forward times speed range square brackets i what i'm also going to do is set the parent object of our asteroids to be our asteroid field object so to do that we do asteroid clones square brackets i dot transform dot parent is equal to this dot transform so if we save that go back to unity before we test our game, we need to go to our asteroid prefabs. I'm going to select them all and we need to add a rigid body. So add component, physics, rigid body. I'm just going to move it up. I'm also going to turn off gravity and freeze the Y position. So if we test our game, our asteroids now move at different speeds in the forward direction of our asteroid field. And also they're all parented to our asteroid field object. Before the video ends, I'd just like to give a special thanks to the artist behind our asset packs, Julian. You can find him on Instagram at woo.ju.digital. So that's all we've got for this video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Unity 3D. For updates on our asset packs and videos, don't forget to hit that notification bell and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. For a more behind the scenes look into what we do, you can also follow us on Instagram. Links for those will be in the description below. 
My name is Joshua Mutu and thanks for watching.